disclaimer, we are not investigative journalists. We simply read, watch, and listen to whatever we can to satisfy our curiosity while use this information to form our own personal opinions. Do not take this as investigative journalism. This is simply our own rabbit holes. Hey guys, I'm Victoria. And I'm Rachel. Thanks for joining us for this bonus episode that I think we'll call Down the Rabbit Hole because why not? Before we start, we want to say that while we do research and read or listen or watch to everything we can, there is conflicting reports. And again, we want to state that we are not investigative journalists. We just like crime because we're weirdos and we're okay with that. And some of what we say during these episodes are just our thoughts and we have nothing but respect for the people involved and for the loss of life. We're going to be talking about Shannon Gilbert. This comes from our last episode where we talked about the documentary Unraveled the Long Island Serial Killer. Before we jump in and tell you her story, we want to say we have nothing but respect for all the victims involved in this case, and we just decided to focus on Shannon's story because sadly, without her disappearance and death, the other victims probably would have never been found or left out there for another 10 plus years. So with that said, let's go down this rabbit hole. Shannon Gilbert was a 24-year-old sex worker when she disappeared on May 1st, 2010. Her early life was not easy, she was the oldest of four girls, and when her mother, Mary, left her partner after allegations of molestation, all four kids entered foster care. But the mom did regain custody of her two younger daughters. Shannon was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. A little information about bipolar disorder is a mental disorder that is also known as manic depression. Bipolar causes mood swings. These mood swings cause a person to have very high highs and very low lows. Bipolar disorder is very common and can be helped with medication, and I'm really glad to hear she was diagnosed so early with this because it probably helped her a lot in the long run, because at least she knew it wasn't anything she was doing or that she could help, that she had these crazy mood swings, but I can't help but speculate that these two older girls had to feel really upset and possibly even angry with their mom. I mean, think about it. At those young ages, it must have felt like their mom was playing favorites and did only want the younger ones that didn't have these mental issues, which is a very sad thought but from experience. Some people with bipolar disorder can distort reality or have a really hard time living in reality, which I think we see comes to play a role later. I also want to add that if you are struggling with your mental health, there are so many resources available now that you can get help without leaving your home. So please reach out and we will have resources listed in the description of this episode as well as our social medias. Yes, please do. Taking care of yourself is very important. So Shannon Gilbert, graduated a year early at the age of 16. This shows how smart she is. Even with the chaos of her home life, she was able to not only graduate high school, but she did it a year before her peers. Shannon's talents went beyond the classroom. She was a very talented singer. You can hear recordings of her singing on the Lisk podcast. She had dreams of becoming a singer. Shannon's passion for singing led her to move to Jersey City, New Jersey, where she would be closer to New York City for auditions. While working odd jobs and attending college, she found the sex work business and became an escort. This is where she would meet Alex Diaz, who would be her driver with the company. Alex Diaz would soon become her boyfriend, where they stayed together until her disappearance. Shannon and Alex seem to be very happy by all accounts, and based on what I have heard and seen from Alex, he really did care for her. But it wasn't all good. We do know that there was one instance of abuse in this relationship, and this did result in Alex being charged with criminal domestic violence. Alex has talked openly about the situation, and he said that there was a time where an argument went too far, and he punched Shannon so hard in the face that it broke her jaw, and she did have to have a titanium implant put into her jaw to correct this injury. It's sad that such a talented, beautiful woman dealt with such toxic relationships during her short life. The company Alex and Shannon both worked for did get shut down and she was arrested for prostitution. With the bus, they just both decided to work, quote, normal jobs. Alex had a lot of success with this, but Shannon wasn't having the same success. She wasn't making nearly as much money as she did escorting. She would go back to escorting when she needed to to make some quick money. She did join in with another company, and this is where she would meet Michael Pack. Pack was her driver with an escort service, and when Shannon decided advertising her services on Craigslist, he would drive her to those clients as well. Just a little background on how a driver and an escort work. The escort has a set hourly price and the driver gets the percentage of that, usually like 10% from what I've read. So just a little information for y'all that I fell during this rabbit hole. So let's go into the day Shannon disappeared. In the early evening, Shannon and Alex went to see the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. After that, Shannon and Michael began calling back and forth because Shannon had set up a client on Craigslist. 
he picked her up and they went off to that client after that they did just kind of hang out and they ended up setting up a job in oak beach long island and this would be with joseph brewer they drove an hour out to oak beach and michael dropped shannon off at brewer's house then mike would wait for her shannon did call him at one point and asked him to go to the store for for her and brewer but michael said he was super late and he didn't know the area so he wasn't going to do that then she hung up on him sometime later brewer and shannon left the house and came back, but Michael said he didn't see any bags with them. So he doesn't know if they went to the store or what. Michael passed passed the time by playing online poker and sleeping. It wasn't until Brewer came knocking on Michael's window, waking him up, saying that Shannon was refusing to leave his house. So Michael went inside to talk to Shannon, and he said that she seemed really off, and he tried to get her to leave, but she refused. And at this point, she was on the phone with 911. When she continued to refuse to leave, Michael went back outside, and he told Brewer that Shannon still wouldn't leave. Sometime later, Shannon came running out of the house and started running around the neighborhood and banging on doors asking for help. There were a total of four 911 calls made that night, one from Shannon, one from Brewer, and two from neighbors. Michael did try to follow Shannon and get her in the car, but at some point he lost track of her. So you may wonder how he lost track of her. At this time, Oak Beach was a very marshy area. And if you don't know what marshy is, it's kind of like swampy that only had about 60 houses and there was one road in and one road out. So when Michael lost track of her, he did search for her for a while and then decided she would find her own way home and he returned home. And this was at 6 a.m. So there were four 911 calls placed and it took Suffolk County PD an hour to respond out to the Oak Beach area. Um, We do know that Shannon's 911 call was routed to the wrong people. It was routed to this New York State Police instead of Suffolk County. So that could possibly play a role in it. But with there being three other phone calls with most likely accurate things about where she what they were, you know, I don't really understand why it took an hour. No, me neither. I can't see how a I know it's a small community and it's out in the middle of nowhere, but uh an hour? I mean, I can get anywhere in my own community within an hour. I mean, quicker than an hour. And I live out, I mean, we live in six, so. Right? I don't know. So I just think that's interesting and I don't really understand why it would take that long. There's not really, to me, any reason, especially if they're calling, like the neighbors are probably calling and saying like, hey, there's a woman like in distress over here. We need to get help to her. And you're gonna take an hour? Yeah, no. Um... Can you imagine if if that happened in any community, there'd be riots? 100%. I'm, su- I'm surprised there isn't more riots than there already are. If you watch a lot of the documentaries that talk about this or read a lot into it, they the police try to cover their oops with it, stating that it was because of her location, although it doesn't make any sense why the other three calls don't, don't get help quicker. Exactly. So uh, the county was trying to cover their foot. Yeah, they've already realized they're hitting the ground a little late. All righty. So with Shannon leaving like this, um, it has been said that Shannon did use drugs. Um, and unfortunately, drugs and mental health issues really don't mix. Some drugs can make things worse and heighten certain problems. So I kind of wonder if if that was the start of this, um, if there was being drug use and, and then Shannon found herself in in a bad situation. But after two days of not hearing from Shannon and her not returning home, Alex says, called Shannon's sisters to see if she had gone there. When they all figured out she was she was missing, Alex called Michael, and then Michael also discovered that Shannon was missing. Michael and Alex did talk with Brewer, and Brewer stated he didn't know where, that she was missing and hadn't seen her since that night. According to statements from Alex and Michael, they both went to the police station, and they said Brewer and the police seemed all buddy-buddy. Mind you, if you didn't know she was missing, these police were supposedly coming out after you called them. That that part makes no sense to me. Like, yeah, no. you didn't talk to the police officers after you, after you called them? But, you know, I'm not sure. Who knows? So after more conversation with the police, they were told they would have to file a missing persons report in the town of residence for Shannon, which was Jersey City, which I didn't know this was a thing, that you had to report someone missing where they live, but... After looking into it, it seems like that's just like the normal for filing a missing persons report. Which and makes that's no left sense. Me with, yeah, it makes no sense because that's left me with so many questions as to like how it all works. I'm like, okay, so if I went missing in like another state. Which is what Shannon did. Right. So you report me missing here, but I went missing here. 
are they just gonna do they just supposed to connect i don't understand and that's confusing to me so but, I would, um, I, I, i've always been told that it's always in the last location but i think it depends on in the the district they're in too so that might be like a tri-state area thing like ups there but it's very interesting it is but Shannon's family did file the missing persons report. So her mom and sisters were the ones to file the missing persons report. Shannon's mom and sister drove to Oak Beach area where Shannon was last seen and knocked on doors, handing out flyers. Now we don't have a certain timeline of how some things happened. Mary, Shannon's mom, did get two phone calls from Dr. P Peter Hackett. The other thing about these phone calls, first, Dr. Hackett tried to deny that he ever made these phone calls. Once the phone records were released, and it did prove that he called Mary. The second is that Mary states he called saying that he ran a home for wayward girls and Shannon had spent the night at his house, but took off the next morning. He wanted to know if he, she made it home safely. It has also been said that he had given Shannon some medication to calm her down, but Hackett claims this isn't true. He said he got her number from Alex and Michael and they only called to offer the support of the fam to the family. So a little backstory here on Dr. Peter Hackett. He was a well-known person in this community, and he was the former head of Suffolk County Emergency Services, and he was known to have a police scanner and go out to any calls that were close by to see if he could help. Personally, I think that's a bit odd, but that's just me. Maybe it's a case of he used to do it, so he has a hard time letting go, but I, I don't. Having the police scanner, I don't see as odd, but pulling up to the scenes, now that's going a bit far for me. During the search for Shannon, it is where the other bodies that are now widely associated with the Long Island serial killer were found. While we are not discussing that part of things, we want to say we have nothing but respect for those women, and we really hope that the person or persons responsible for those victims are caught. It wasn't until December 13, 2011, that Shannon's body was discovered about 200 feet from Dr. Hackett's home. Her purse sho and shoes were found a good distance from her body. The Suffolk County Medical Examiner ruled the cause of death in inconclusive, but later independent medical examiners stated that Shannon had injuries that consisted of homicidal strangulation, just another piece of inconsistent information. I'm glad they had the independent medical examiner also perform an autopsy. I am glad for that too, because it, it answers all seem like, yep. seems Everything like Suffolk was County was trying yep. to cover up. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad they made that step. Even if they don't associate her with this case of the Long Island Zero Killer, I think it's glad. I'm glad that they looked into that more. Sadly, this really is where the investigation with Shannon is left off as far as what's known to the public. But the family has never stopped fighting to find out the truth of what happened to Shannon that night. And the family does have a lawyer that in 2020 finally received a copy of the 911 phone call Shannon made. They'd been fighting in court about this for like three years, mind you. So three years of Suffolk County and the state and the family's lawyer going back and forth just to release the call to the family's lawyer, which I find shady. But when they did release the 911 phone call to the lawyer, a judge also placed an order that the lawyer could not say what was on the tape. The lawyer has found ways around this by just answering like true or false questions based on statements that have already been made about the call. So right now, this is all we have to go on, and we really hope in the future more information is released, and more than anything, Shannon's family can finally know the truth about what happened to her. So let's talk about personal thoughts and theories about what we think happened. Again, we'd like to say we are not investigators. We are not investigative journalists. We are just two women who have a weird crime obsession and just seek out information to satisfy our own curiosity. So, Rachel? Tell me your thoughts and theories on what happened with Shannon. So my thoughts on the Shannon case. I believe Shannon was murdered. I believe that when she escaped and was hiding under the boat, um, she was chased down by whoever the Long Island serial killer is. And he was, they were afraid. I don't think her, his initial action was to kill her that day. I think it was no other choice. And I think whatever's on that 911 call reveals who the killer is. I have to agree with most of that. I think whatever's on that call really is going to open up a whole can of worms and possibly implicate Brewer a little bit because it was his house. And if he really was buddy buddy with the police, then, you know, since we already know based on the last episode we did that Suffolk County was full of corruption at this point. But I'm also torn on was it connected with that or what Shannon's mom said true and Peter Hackett did give her some drugs now 
if her, he did, her neck gets and, strangled. Right. So I just have so many different theories floating around in my head about it. Of was it an accident? Was like you know maybe things with Brewer got a little too rough, and that's what freaked her out because we know she had seen um, the Nightmare on Elm Street movie. So and like I stated earlier, that people with bipolar disorder have trouble with staying in reality. Um, it's just a whole thing. And if she was doing drugs that night, you know, it could have just escalated things. And if Hackett did give her some sort of drug, it could have, you know, she could have been doing cocaine or something. And then he gave her something to doubt that was like a downer and it could have just all been an accident. But I just based on what's already released, I really just, I don't know. And there's just so many options of how things could have happened. Yeah. Um, June 28th of this year, Senator Boyle had released a press conference um, at Oak Beach Park demanding answers from the Suffolk County officials. Because I really think that 911 call is going to give us a lot more information. That demand from answers was requesting a special prosecutor to be named and, and to begin investigating. He wants them to start clearing Suffolk County police officers so that he can he can know that they are not involved, figure out who is involved, you know, start work from there. Um, and he said he's he made these letters because of the Unraveled podcast and documentary. So hopefully with his help there, we'll be able to hear what's on that 911 call. And then we can have some more information. I mean, we're not the investigators. We don't really need to hear it. I would just hope whoever needs to hear it, hears it so that we can know what happened. Yeah, that way it's out there. And then we finally have answers. And like I said earlier, that mostly Shannon's family has answers because they deserve to know what happened to their loved one. Yeah, her mom worked really hard. So her mom was a huge advocate through that entire like investigation. So we'd love to hear what everyone else thinks. So please find us on Instagram and Facebook to share your thoughts and theories. So thank you for joining us for our first bonus episode. And who knows, there might be more bonus episodes later. Tune back in on Friday for our normal episode. And we will see you then. Bye. Bye.